All right, today we're gonna to talk about a really cool, special Sierra tree that are kind of scattered everywhere, but you don't see them unless you're looking for them. But uh, they're one of the easier trees to spot in the Sierra if you know what you're looking for. Look down under one of these trees, you're gonna find these cones everywhere. They're the longest of the Sierra cones and they're going to be everywhere under a pine tree. But to, to validate whether you're looking at the right tree, you got to look up in the canopy of a tree. So you got to step back, look up into the canopy, and there they are. The pine cones are always at the very tops of the tree. Look at all those guys. You probably don't want to stand under these during a storm. They're actually kind of light, but they're just magnificent trees. And they maintain a large diameter all the way up. Now, what's interesting about these trees is they never grow in pure stands. They always grow in very diverse communities. So just right here, there's a uh, incense cedar right there. That's a young uh, white fir. Uh, behind me, this scraggly looking thing, that's a black oak. Uh, right here, we have a Douglas fir. And here's a young uh, ponderosa pine seedling. So they always grow in these diverse forests. And oh, there's a big giant red fir right there, a beautiful tree. And uh, yeah, they're, they're interesting because they're always, they typically grow kind of alone or in small little groves within, a, within another forest of multiple species. So very interesting trees, but if you want to make sure it's a bristle cone, I mean, uh, a sugar pine and you just look up and you can confirm that all right so other ways to identify this tree other than these massive cones that can grow up to two feet and they'll be everywhere under one of these trees uh, the branches don't start till really high up so I had to find a younger tree and the needles come in bundles of five so that's a good ID factor if you can find a younger tree but they don't they change appearance as they get older like this guy so so the Native Americans used this tree for lots of purposes and took advantage of the wealth of resources this tree provides for centuries before the first white men came over uh, the famous botanist David Douglas discovered these trees of course he's uh, of Douglas fir fame and he was very impressed with these stately trees and he gave them the moniker, the most princely of the genus, the genus being Pinus. And these trees are the largest and the tallest of the genus. This tree is probably 300 years old. They can attain an age of about 500 years. And they're just uh, special trees. Uh, they also got their name from the sap. They have a very sweet sap. The Native Americans ate the sap. It's said that John Muir actually preferred the sap over maple syrup. Uh, so kind of interesting. So that's where they got the name Sugar Pine. Uh, the timber industry loves these trees. I'm standing in El Dorado National Forest, and this is an active timber uh, harvesting area. There's been a lot of logging through here. And these are a prized tree of the lumber industry because of the way they grow, there, there's a, a lot of mass in one tree, but it's mostly because of the way they, their, their grains are straight. They're great for making things for the building industry, like doorways and window frames. And they're also the hardest of the pines. So they're just great for building. So the lumber industry likes them, cuts down as many as they can. However, they don't do well in the plantation style replantings that we do after we do a clear cut or if there's a fire. There was, a big there was also a huge fire through here. Uh, there's been a couple of them in the last 50 years that have wiped out everything, really hot fires. 
And if you drive up to where I'm standing at Ice House Reservoir up in the National Forest, you'll see a plantation style planting of a monoculture of almost entirely uh, ponderosa pines. They grow fast, they're easy to plant from seedlings, and they're of great value to the timber industry. They're the easiest tree to plant. However, when you do those vast monocultures, you're susceptible to a lot of disease. So the diversity in these forests where these trees grow offer them some protection against pests because there's a, a, there's a barrier of other trees. So if one a, a pest comes in that likes a certain tree, they can't spread from tree to tree. So these trees are harder to plant. They're harder to produce from seedlings. So the timber industry typically doesn't replant them and neither does the forest service. They want to have the biggest return they can. However, UC Davis, our local ag uh, university, great place. They did a program in 2019. We had a big drought in California years ago. They went out and picked uh, up seeds from surviving trees in the Tahoe Basin. And uh, it's so easy to collect seeds. They're all on the ground in these cones. So the, the point was they wanted to get the most drought tolerant, resistant trees, the ones that survived. And they grew those from seedlings. And in the last couple of years, they planted 5,000 trees in the Tahoe Basin including the appropriately named Sugar Pine State Park, which is right on the shores of Lake Tahoe. So uh, they had the CCC the, uh, do the planning for them. So that's a, a great partnership uh, between the university and the CCC. Young people be getting out in the forest, doing things for a forest, creating diversity. So uh, that's how they're getting replanted other than natural regeneration, which of course there's some. So they do have a couple pests. Uh, an introduced white pine blister is a pest of them and the mountain pine beetle. So if there's a drought, they become more susceptible, but when they get to be a size like this, they're, they're pretty resistant. This area was bypassed by the fire, so it's very diverse. Uh, some of the biggest specimens I've ever seen are growing in uh, sequoia groves, like in Yosemite or uh, I was in Calaveras Big Tree State Park a few weeks ago, and there's some massive sugar pines there. And when they get really, really big and mature, their bark tends to smooth out and get really scaly and flaky, and you, it loses these ridges. They're very distinct, and they're the only pine that does that. They have the smoothest bark of the pines. So when they get really mature, they take on an interesting look. So uh, they, have an interesting history here in California also. Uh, the famous Sutter's Mill, which was built to harvest timber, was specifically targeting sugar pines because it's such a great lumber. And uh, so that, the, you could say the sugar pines are responsible for a lot of the history of California. So they're not the most drought tolerant tree, but uh, they are a magnificent tree. And uh, if you see the big long cones on the ground, take a look around, it's, uh, it's gonna be a sugar pine. There is one uh, pine tree that mimics, mimics these pine cones. It's the Western white pine. Those tend to grow up higher, uh, but their cones are half the size of these guys and they tend to be more closed. These are open on the ground. And the other interesting thing about these trees is uh, they get along with everybody. Uh, th they can grow cro close to uh, sea level on the coast ranges. They range up into Oregon, and they, there's even a, some grows in Baja in Mexico, and there's a few in Nevada. That's the, the extent of their range. But they have a huge uh, elevation range, but uh, they can grow up to 10,000 feet they've been spotted. But most of the ones I see and the sweet spot for them is on the western slope in rich soils in very diverse communities. They don't tend to do as well and expose open areas or up at really high elevations. But there's always, always micro climates in areas that, uh, that they can grow. But between about, I'd say about 4,000 to 6,500 6, feet is kind of their sweet spot where you get the really large specimens. And this is a, this is a pretty large tree. Uh, it's in the larger realm of these trees, but they do get a lot bigger. So uh, the sugar pine, it's a pretty sweet tree. Thanks for watching.